Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. I did this layout called Life. It's a real balancing act. And it's got animals balancing on each other. And I really like it. So what I've decided to do is to recreate it and put it on one of my um, all mixed media recipe cards that are going to go in my binder style book. I've talked about this in previous videos and um, I'm doing little individual mixed media pieces on recipe cards from an old recipe book that is a binder and then uh, I add things to them and I'm filling the whole book and this is in a different book but I liked it so much I loved how it turned out I just thought I would do it on camera so you guys can play along. So to start this card I have covered the recipe card both sides with book text and Mod Podge and this is just to make a base to do my mixed media artwork on and I left the holes where they were I kind of went around them sometimes I cover them and punch them but either way it doesn't matter on this one uh, this was actually a card I'm running out of recipe cards in the book and so you can use cardboard file folders or anything else to make more cards to to uh, keep filling your book and this one I made out of cardboard and I did go ahead and um, make a little tab at the end because what I'm going to do, the final step I'm going to do is to add a whole bunch of really interesting tabs to all the pages in the book. So this one, I left a tab or I cut out a tab and some of them I just do straight cards. I do them all different sizes to make it really interesting. And so then what I do once it's dry is just go around those edges, trim off the excess, and I like to corner round mine. Um, it's entirely up to you what you want to do with yours. So here's what it looks like trimmed out. Here's my card ready to go and ready to be decorated. Text and Mod Podge just makes the... Um, makes the card more sturdy, more solid, and sometimes I do my um, my pieces of artwork where it shows through, and sometimes I do it where I cover it and I don't want it to show through, and today I am going to cover it with gesso. And I'm using a smooth gesso. It's a smooth page prep gesso. I'll have the list of supplies in the link below. Um, and the difference is that on a smoother gesso, obviously smooth, it's going to have less grit um, and I'm going to do my collaging on here and I'm going to do a lot of lettering with paint pens so I want it to be as smooth as possible so that's why I'm choosing a smooth gesso as my prep this time. Mixed media is all about your layers and um, the first layer on this one is the gesso and gesso is perfectly fine being um, being dried with the heat tool. So some layers you can't do that with, but just so you can. So you want to make sure each layer is dry before you move on to the next. So I'm going to go ahead and use my heat tool and dry this. And I've chosen three colors for my background, but um, you can just use one. You can use whatever you want on your background. I just don't want my background to compete with the image that I'm creating this time. And I am going to do writing and journaling and doodling. So I don't really want to um, make a wild and crazy background. The paint is going to be just something that covers it and adds color. It's not, it's, I'm not going to do stenciling or anything like that this time. It's just going to be the fun, oops, wow, got way too much paint there. Um, it's just going to be the fun image and... And that's what's going to be my design. So I'm just using a baby wipe to spread out this paint. Turned a lot more green than I had envisioned but you know I kind of like it and it will definitely go with what I'm going to do. That looks great. 
perfect layer. The next fun task you have is finding your images and I'm going with kind of small. This page in my book is relatively small so I can't have images that are too terribly big but what I'm going for is animals that I can stack. So I may use this armadillo at the bottom or the bear at the bottom, I'm not sure which, but the point of it is is to make them balance on top of each other. You're going to stack them back and forth and back and forth so that they stack on each other and I'm going to put fancy little hats on them and so they're going to be tipped one way then another way like how they would how they would balance. So it's going to be a stack of balancing animals. So once you find your animals out of magazines you could use uh, National Geographic. Uh, this was a little book I don't remember the name of it. It was just a little book on animals that came from um, the thrift shop and it was like an A to Z animal book which is perfect because they're nice and small. And um, Or you can find internet images, whatever you want to use, but find some fun and interesting things. I've even got this cute little frog here. I may figure out how to get him in there somewhere. Um, I was going to use possibly this dog as the base and then balance them on the dog, but it's going to take up too much room, I think, on my page. So um, I'm going with the smaller images. So consider that as you pick out your images and you start to lay them out before you cut them out and you're stacking them, make sure they're going to fit on your page. Then once you find them and they're going to, and they're going to fit stacked, figure out how many you want. doesn't matter. It can be just a couple or it can be a lot then you need to trim them out and fussy cut them. Next I'm going to take this scrapbooking paper and it's got this fun swirl pattern to it and I'm going to take a circle template and then a bigger, this is I think a bit bigger, I need something a little bit bigger, you could use a compass or whatever and I'm going to just um, cut out some different sized circles in this interesting pattern paper. So here are my circles cut out and laid out onto the page where I'm going to put them and I'm going to put them down with a matte gel medium. time to start laying out my animals. So the first one at the bottom is going to be my armadillo. And I'm just going to put them down with matte medium as well, matte gel medium. So I'm putting him at the bottom and I'm making him be just straight because he's kind of my base. And then my second item is going to be my bear. And I think I'm going to tip him this way. Because I'm trying to make them look like they're teeter-tottering on each other for balance. And then on top of my bear, I'm putting a frog. So I'm going back and forth, back and forth, right, left, right, left. Frog is next. Then I'm going to put this cute little mouse holding a strawberry. And I'm going to balance my skunk on top of the strawberry.
then on his foot, I'm going to balance this rabbit. Cute. And then one little tidbit, I have this bird looking down, and I'm just going to throw this at the top. Just he's like watching the watching the goings on. And it gives it more balance. So there's my bird and my rabbit balancing on the skunk, and the skunk is balancing on the mouse and the strawberry. The mouse is on the frog, the frog is on the bear, and the bear is on the armadillo. Cute. So now I'm gonna let that dry. Now while my animals are drying, I'm gonna put that aside, and the next thing you want to do is go through a magazine and cut out the letters ACT for the word ACT. So you're going to just find big ads like this, make a change in Thrive, and see if I want to use that T. I'm going to just cut that T out. I might just like this. And that's going to be the T. Yep, I like it. C, so find an ACT. And they can be all different colors and all different sizes. It doesn't matter. You're just going to make a wonky, the wonky word act out of ACT. So there are my random style letters from my magazine. And I'm going to lay them out, tipping them back and forth like they're balancing. And I'm going to put them over here and I'm going to put them down with matte gel medium. So now I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to lay out the rest of my words and I want the word life to be really big right here. So I don't usually do it in pencil but this time I'm going to because um, it's a, a little more complicated and a little more uh, information than I usually put on a page when I do my lettering. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do it lightly in pencil. And I'm going to just Pencil out the word life in my normal, trying to do it on camera, in my normal style of lettering, just lightly. And then over here, um, I need the word is, and I think I'm going to put it along the animals here. In fact, I am going to just do it in pen is and I'm going to put the the letter A here is A and then around this circle I'm going to put the R E A L for real and I'm going to put balancing in this ball the words going in a circle and act here so I'm going to go ahead and pin that in and then I'll show you what it looks like so here are my words life is a real balancing act and I do have if you don't know how to do this kind of lettering on an art journal page or a mixed media piece. I do have another video that's a great video on how to do different types of lettering like this and I'll link that below. So what I'd like to do now is to um, go around the letters that I want to have stand out. So the word life I want to have stand out. The word act, what I will do with that is to take my paint pen and I'm going to do some real sketchy lines. So they're not real specific, they're not, I'm even not thinking about what I'm doing, I'm just drawing some sketchy lines around them. Just to box them in, but they're kind of grungy messy, I love that look. And then for doodling, because I have this cool swirl pattern on here, I can take a white paint pen and I can come in here and actually just follow the doodles that are already on this paper and follow them in. I'm going to follow mine in white. So I'm going to come in here and where these doodles are, I love the swirls. I'm going to just make the swirls white with my white paint pen. And the lines on the scrapbooking paper already give me my doodles to follow. So I don't even have to come up with it on my own. I'm just following my 
scrap of paper. I'm going to fill those doodles in behind. So there's what my doodling looks like on my scrapbooking paper, which makes those circles kind of pop. Now next thing I'm going to do is to go around my stack of animals, and I'm going to use an orange paint pen. Seems kind of a little wild, but when I go to my color wheel and I look at, I've got blue and green here. If I look at my color wheel, let me turn this. Um, blue and green. So the blue color, the green, blue, and blue, violet, and blue, and the green colors, they're all together, which is analogous colors. And here's my blue, which is my main color. And orange is a complementary color. So I'm going to use orange because it complements the blue and the green. Plus there's a yellow orange in here and a little bit of orange on the strawberry. And I don't, I could outline it in black, but they're going to just disappear. You want something that's going to make them pop off the page. So I'm going to go ahead and go around my animals and do it in orange. Then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's my little line of orange around my animals and as you can see it makes them really pop. I like that. It makes them stand out. And you know if you're not doing the recipe card thing um, you can do this in an art journal too. This would work out perfectly well in an art journal. Do a fun background, do your stack of animals, and do your saying. So the next thing I'm going to do is to take a blue pen. This is a brush pen and it is a um, Prisma Premier brush pen. And I'm going to go around my circles in my Prisma brush pen just to make them stand out a little bit. And while the ink is wet, I just take my finger and kind of just blend it out a little bit and soften that outer edge of it. Like that. And if you don't have these specific pens and you have uh, something else, you could use a Faber Castell Pit Artist pens. Those would work and do the same thing. Any brush pen will work. Just put it down and while it's wet, kind of blend it out a little bit. So here's what that looks like with the shadow behind my circles. So now that I've got some colors on the page, I'm going to go ahead and highlight and go around the word life and maybe even draw some more lines around the word act and, and just play around with it just to make my letters pop off the page a little more. So there's what my letters look like with yellow around them and then I put blue around the A, white around the real, orange around the balancing. I did some yellow lines to tie that yellow in with this yellow and bring your eye across and white around my is. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 in a uh, flame red. It's really an orange. And I'm going to go along this edge that I colored in orange with the paint pen and I'm going to blend it out. And the nice thing about Neo Colors is when you go right over something, it doesn't get dulled. It stays nice and vibrant and bright. So I'm just going to do that so that I can make that shadow around the animals, make those animals pop even more. I'm going to go all the way around with my Neo Color. And I'm just blending it out with my finger. You can add water to blend it out too, but that's going to be a different look. So play around with it and see what you like. Now I'm going to take a, um, a Tombow Mono drawing pen. Those are, are the best to use and they're waterproof. And I'm going to see how I kind of outlined a little bit around that frog. I wanted to see if that would make him stand out a little bit more. I didn't want a paint pen line because it's too thick. So this is thinner and uh, it's an O2 size O2 tip. And so I'm going to just go around the animals just to uh, bring them out just a little bit. So the little line around the animals, see how what a difference that made. It really made them pop out. I like it a lot. The black just made the animal stack pop a little bit better. 
And so now what I'm going to do is take a white paint pen and I'm going to go into these little spaces and I'm going to do some circle doodling. You know, and that's up to you. You can do how whatever you want on your pages. This is just this is just showing you what I'm doing and it's just for inspiration. So, but if I come in here and I do some random doodles just to fill up that spot and they don't even have to be perfect and you can still see the background and then it just adds a little bit more detail so I'm going to do that in a couple of places just Do some random doodling. So here's how it turned out. I really love it. It's cute and fun and quirky. I did my white paint pen little doodles here and there just to add something fancy around the edges. And it's really just something super fun and I hope you enjoyed this and that um, you check out the lettering video and learn how to do some creative lettering and that you do a life is a real balancing act page in your art journal or on a mixed media card. So thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Go make some art because art soothes the heart. And I am going to go ahead and use some spray acrylic sealant on this for UV protection. Since it's going into a book that's going to be sitting out on my coffee table, it might get some light exposure. So uh, most of the art supplies I used are very light fast, but I'm still going to go ahead and seal this page.